Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be adapting onto my previous one of a day night cycle and in this we're going to be adding the time and day on there as well. So let me hit play and show you what this is going to look like. So once we get in you can see that we have our normal day night cycle with the sun moving that we set up previously and you can also see in the top left we have the time which is accurate to where the sun's position is now and it's going up and obviously it will keep on going up as the day goes by and as we end the day you'll see the days will clock up from 0 to 1. In a future episode I'm going to be setting up saving and loading this time so if you leave the game and come back in the time will be the same, the days will be the same, all that good stuff. But again I'm not going to be doing that in today's episode, that will be in the future. But again as you can see it's just getting to around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock now and it's got completely pitch black which seems about accurate and again obviously we went over more of that in the previous episode if you want it to look a bit different. And it's starting to get a bit lighter again now as we get into the early hours of the morning. So I imagine this is more of like a middle of the summer time and as we get to about 7 in the morning you see it's kind of getting to full brightness and the sun has just risen and it's also now day 1 as well so sorry I forgot to mention that as it clocked over from midnight it went up to day 1. As you see that works perfectly for us. So this is what we're going to make today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is open up the code we created last time which was in the level blueprint. So go to blueprints open level blueprint. In here we want to create a new function and that is to keep track of the time and the clock and all that good stuff. So I'm going to hit the plus functions here and like I said this is to keep track of time I'm going to name this track time or time tracking or clock or anything along those lines which makes the most sense for you. What we want to do in here is we want to give this an input of our delta seconds or essentially this value we calculated last time. So we got the world delta seconds and times that by the speed to then get the speed of the day. So you might also want to name it day speed. So actually I'll name it that instead as that makes more sense. So go back to our function, select the input and then add an input. I'm going to name this one day speed like so, making sure this is a float value like so. We compile and save that. Because now we're going to have this value which is obviously going to make sure that our clock and our time is always going to be accurate to what is actually happening in the world with our sun and the speed of the day moving like that. So again also to keep this accurate and in time we want to come out of this and get a multiplication so a float multiplied by a float and we want to multiply this by 240 so again it is completely accurate no matter what the speed of the day is. And then out of this we want to get an addition so a float plus a float and to this we're going to add another float. So we can add a plus float here or a plus variable and I'm going to name this one seconds adding a changing from a boolean to a float there compile and again adding that onto there like so. So we're getting the day speed multiplying it by 240 and adding that to the seconds. The seconds is just a value we're going to use to keep track of the time. So out of this we're going to then set seconds there with the input being the addition there. So essentially it's just going to keep increasing our seconds dependent on what it actually should be based on the day time and day speed that we have here. So this should work perfectly for us. But then to actually make this into a time, so this is just the seconds, we want to have this as minutes, hours, seconds, all that good stuff. What we can very simply do is just out of this get a truncate so it turns it into an integer. And then out of this we can make time span. So a time span is a nice little variable which we have in Unreal which keeps track of time. So it's got days, hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds and it will do it all automatically for us. So once the seconds gets up to 60 it will add 1 to the minutes and set the seconds to 0. Once the minutes gets to 60 it will add 1 to the hours and set the minutes to 0. So it's a very useful node and variable we have which will do everything for us automatically. And we want to make sure that the truncate doesn't go into days but instead it goes into seconds. As like I said this float is called seconds which is why I've named it that so we don't get confused here as we want this to be the seconds so we'll tally up normally. And then we can right click the return value, hit promote to variable and I'm just going to name this time or time span or anything like that and we're going to set that after the set seconds there like so. So this should now work perfectly for us tracking our time and that is it, it's very very simple to do. So now what we've got is we have our time variable here. We compile go back to the event graph and we want to actually use this function. So we want to be using this function at the very start of our time cycle so it automatically does it whenever we want it to. So we can drag our function in here and then just connect that into the time cycle there. And again the day speed is going to be this multiplication here 
So get well dealt seconds multiplied by our speed going in there perfectly like so and that should then work perfectly for you now so it's going to keep a track of the time. We now obviously want to be able to use this and put this on screen so the player knows what the time and day is. So we compile and save and let's set that up now. So we can minimize this, right click in our content browser, go to use interface and create a widget blueprint and I'm just going to name this one time widget like so, opening it up straight away. In here I'm just going to simply add a text box and I'm just going to name this time text like so. What I'm also going to do is hit size to content and set the size of the font to 40. Customize that to get whatever you like but for the purpose of this tutorial I think that's going to be good. And in the text you don't need to write anything but I'm just going to write out how I'm going to display it. So I'm essentially going to have day and then the time. So let's say 1456. So that is what it's going to look like. So let me just write in day 5 as well like so. Again, you don't need to do that because we're not actually going to use it. We're going to overwrite it in a second, but this is what it will look like for me. So I'm going to select that again. And then next to text where we just wrote that, you can set hit bind and create binding. And this is then going to input a time into this text. We can move the return node out and we'll come back to this in a second. Because what we need to do first is actually get the time into this widget. So we compile, go back to our level blueprint and off of event begin play here, we're going to create widget like so with the class obviously being our time widget we just made right click the return value and promote it to a variable naming this one time widget ref like so or whatever you like and out of that we're then going to add to the viewport so we now also have the time on the player screen and we now have a reference to the widget as well which we can access and where we want to access it is back in the track time function here so we'll double click that to open it up and after set time, we want to get an is valid node, like so, with the input object being that time widget reference there. And the reason we're doing that is because this is going to fire off just a fraction of a second before the widget is created. So that will give you some errors if you don't have the is valid node in here. Because is valid will only fire off once it's been set, is not valid will fire off when it hasn't been set. So again, now we want to actually go back into our time widget. Sorry, so I messed that bit up. Go back into our time widget create a variable and I'm just going to name this one time I'm going to set the variable type to be time span like so compile go back to the level blueprint so there's quite a bit of switching here sorry about that but now we want to set that so we can drag out of time widget ref and just set the time so set time like so connecting that into is valid and the time is going to be the output of this other set time we have there so now we have the time from the level blueprint going into the time of the widget blueprint. Go back into the widget after you've compiled that and now we can set up putting in the text in here. So that's also very simple. So I'm going to drag in the time here, get time, out of this I'm just going to simply break time span like so. Then what I want to do is I want to get a two text. So I'll come out of days and get a two text integer, opening that up like so. The value is days always sign and always grouping I'll leave as they are and the minimum integral digits I want to be 2 and the maximum also is 2. So what this means is if it's 5 o'clock in the morning it's going to be 0, 5 not just 5. Obviously this is for days so let's say it's day 5 it's going to be 0, 5 instead of just being 5. So you may not want that for this one but the time you definitely will so again if it's 505 you want it to write 0, 5, 0, 5 not just 5, 5. Then you can close that Control C, Control V two more times to duplicate it so it keeps that in there. And then we'll also have the days in the top one, hours in the middle one, and minutes in the bottom one. Of course, you can use as many as you like. So if you want the seconds as well, you can do that, but I'm not going to bother. Then we want to right click and get a format text node. So format text there. And this is how we're going to write our clock so we get it to look how we want. So inside of this, I'm going to write day colon space and then these open and close brackets here the one with the squiggle line I'll put it on screen now and then in this I'm going to write day and close brackets then I'm going to have a space and then a kind of dash line to split the difference between the days and the time another space and then open brackets hours close brackets space colon space open brackets minutes close brackets and you can see when you press enter, we now have day, hours, and minutes, which we can input in here. 
So what this is essentially doing is it's going to write the text as day and then we can input a value for the day and then hours, input value for the hours and then write minutes which we can input value for the minutes. So this will work perfectly. The result will go in the return value of the return node there. We can write in the day, hours and minutes in there from the two text to integer perfectly like so. And now again that is how you customize how you want one text box to look. So instead of having to get multiple text boxes for the days, hours and minutes, we can do it just in one working out like so. And again, that should be it done as it's very, very simple to do. So we'll compile, save, and let's minimize, hit place to test this out. You see we have it on screen and it is working. However, it's currently saying it's one in the morning because what I forgot to do was we go back into our level blueprint and to the make time span, you can see we have it as zero, 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 and then the seconds and zero. So currently it's starting on day zero, hour zero, minute zero. I want it to start at midday. So I'm gonna set my hours to 12. So it starts at midday. You set this to be whatever value you want the time to start at. And again, in future, I'm gonna show you how to save and load it. However, I'm starting at midday, so I'll set it to 12. Now if we hit play, this should work. So as you can see, it's now one o'clock and it's going all the way around, working perfectly like so, going over as it should and obviously when it gets to midnight, it's gonna clock over to day one. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've adapted onto our day night cycle. So now we have the time and days on screen working perfectly like so. So the time actually represents the actual time it should be in game, dependent on the sun's position and the lighting and the day speed and all that. And we're just about to cross over to day one as you saw there. So this works perfectly. And again, I'm gonna adapt onto this even more in the near future. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.